using Pydantic to simplify Python data validation. Pydantic is a powerful data validation and settings management library for Python, engineered to enhance the robustness and reliability of your code. From basic tasks, such as checking whether a variable is an integer, to more complex tasks, such as ensuring highly nested dictionary keys and values have the correct data types, Pydantic can handle just about any data validation scenario with minimal boilerplate code. In this course, you'll learn how to work with data schemas, Write custom validators for complex use cases, validate function arguments, and manage settings and configure applications. Throughout this course, you'll get hands-on examples of Pydantic's functionality, and by the end, you'll have a solid foundation for your own validation use cases. Before starting this course, you'll benefit from having an intermediate understanding of Python and object-oriented programming, and if you need to get up to speed, Real Python has you covered with this video course. Any code that you see running in the REPL will be using the bPython interpreter. This is a replacement Python interpreter that offers a number of enhancements, including code highlighting and suggestions, but any code you see running on screen will work in the standard Python REPL, which is typically accessed by typing Python or Python 3 at your terminal or command line prompt. Don't forget to download the course materials as they include all the code that you'll create in the course, which will make your learning experience easier. So now you know what's going to be covered, let's get started. Python's Pydantic Library One of Python's main attractions is that it's a dynamically typed language. Dynamic typing means that variable types are determined at runtime, unlike statically typed languages where they are explicitly declared at compile time. While dynamic typing is great for rapid development and ease of use, you often need more robust type checking and data validation for real-world applications. This is where Python's Pydantic library has you covered. Pydantic is a popular and widely used data validation library for Python. In this section of the course, you'll get an overview of Pydantic and a preview of the library's powerful features. You'll also learn how to install Pydantic along with the additional dependencies you'll need for this course. Pydantic is a powerful library that leverages type hints to help you easily validate and serialize your data schemas. This makes your code more robust, readable, concise, and easier to debug. Pydantic also integrates well with many popular static typing tools and IDEs, which allows you to catch some schema issues before running your code. Some of Pydantic's distinguishing features include Customization There's almost no limit to the kinds of data you can validate with Pydantic. From primitive Python types to highly nested data structures, Pydantic lets you validate and serialize nearly any Python object. Flexibility. Pydantic gives you control over how strict or lax you want to be when validating your data. In some cases, you might want to coerce incoming data to the correct type. For example, you could accept data that's intended to be a float, but is received as an integer. In other cases, you might want to strictly enforce the data types you're receiving. Pydantic lets you do either. Serialization. You can serialize and deserialize Pydantic objects as dictionaries and JSON strings. This means you can seamlessly convert your Pydantic objects to and from JSON. This capability has led to self documenting APIs and integration with just about any tool that supports JSON schemas. Performance. Thanks to its core validation logic written in Rust, Pydantic is exceptionally fast. This performance advantage gives you swift and reliable data processing, especially in high-throughput applications such as REST APIs that need to scale to a large number of requests. Ecosystem and industry adoption. Pydantic is a dependency of many popular Python libraries such as FastAPI, Langchain, and Polars. It's also used by most of the largest tech companies and throughout many other industries. This is a testament to Pydantic's community support, reliability, and resilience. These are just a few key features that make Pydantic an attractive data validation library, and you'll get to see these in action throughout this course. But first, you'll need to install it. Pydantic is available on the Python package index, and you can install it with pip. You'll need to open a terminal or command line prompt, create a new virtual environment and activate it, and then install Pydantic. First, you'll see this being done on macOS, and these commands will work on Linux as well.
and here are the commands you'll need to do the same on Windows Terminal. Note that only the activation line is different. This will install the latest version of Pydantic from the Python package index onto your machine. To verify that the installation was successful, open up a Python REPL and import Pydantic. If the import runs without error, then you've successfully installed Pydantic and you now have the core of Pydantic installed on your system. You can install optional dependencies with Pydantic as well. In this course, you'll be working with email validation and you can include these dependencies in your install. Pydantic has a separate package for settings management, which you'll also be covering in this course, and you can install it with the command seen on screen. With that, you've installed all the dependencies you'll need, and you're ready to start exploring Pydantic. So that's what you'll be doing next, covering models, which are Pydantic's primary way of defining data schemas. Using models. Pydantic's primary way of defining data schemas is through models. A Pydantic model is an object, similar to a Python data class, that defines and stores data about an entity with annotated fields. Unlike data classes, Pydantic's focus is centered around automatic data parsing, validation, and serialization. The best way to understand this is to create your own models, and that's what you'll be doing next. Let's say you're building an application used by a human resources department to manage employee information, and you need a way to verify that new employee information is in the correct form. For example, each employee should have an ID, name, email, date of birth, salary, department, and benefit selection. And this is a perfect use case for a Pydantic model. To define your employee model, you create a class that inherits from Pydantic's base model. First, you import the dependencies you need to define your employee model. Then you create an enum to represent the different departments in the company, and you'll use this to annotate the department field in your employee model. Here you define your Pydantic model employee, which inherits from base model and defines the names and expected types of the employee fields via annotations. Employee ID. This is the UUID for the employee you want to store information for. By using the UUID annotation, Pydantic ensures that this field is always a valid UUID. Each instance of employee will be assigned a UUID by default, as you specified by calling UUID4. Name. The employee's name, which Pydantic expects to be a string. Email. Pydantic will ensure that each employee email is valid by using Python's email validator library. Date of birth. Each employee's date of birth must be a valid date, as annotated by date from Python's datetime module. If you pass a string into date of birth, Pydantic will attempt to pass and convert it into a date object. Salary. This is the employee's salary, and it's expected to be a float. Department. Each employee's department must be one of HR, sales, IT or engineering as defined in the department enum. Elected benefits. This field stores whether the employee has elected benefits and Pydantic expects it to be a Boolean. The simplest way to create an employee object is to instantiate it as you would any other Python object. To do this, open a Python REPL and run the code seen on screen. First you import employee, and then you create an object with all of the required employee fields.
Pydantic successfully validates and coerces the fields you passed in, and it creates a valid employee object. Notice how Pydantic automatically converts the date string into a date object and the IT string to its respective department enum. Next, you'll look at how Pydantic responds when you try to pass invalid data to an employee instance. Pydantic gives you a detailed error message for each field, telling you what was expected, what was received, and where you can go to learn more about the error. As there are quite a few errors, they're presented on this slide to make them easier to read. This detailed validation is powerful because it prevents you from storing invalid data in employee. It also gives you confidence that the employee objects you instantiate without errors contain the data you're expecting, and you can trust this data downstream in your code or other applications. In the next section of the course, you'll see another useful feature of Pydantic, creating models from other objects.